Hello my friends, in today's video we will take a look at Sony ZV E10. E10 is the second iteration in the ZV series, which is a very pragmatic and focused line of products designed to meet the needs of content creators. It was a little bit difficult to get one during the supply chain shortage, but now you can get one fairly easily. In this video we will take a look at the performance and the feature set of the ZV E10 and I will try to evaluate how well it meets the requirements of modern content creators. The first requirement that the ZV E10 definitely fulfills is the portability. It is just 11.5 cm wide and it only weighs 343 grams which makes it one of the lightest interchangeable cameras ever. It isn't much larger than 1 inch type compact cameras, but that also depends on the lens. The build quality is fine for this category. The construction is mostly plastic and I can't really say that it feels like a premium product, but it doesn't feel cheap or fragile either. The rotating screen hinge is actually ok and it has nice port doors which I always appreciate. It is not weather sealed, that would be too much to ask for at this price point. ZV E10 uses a well known 24 megapixel APS-C sensor. It is not BSI and it largely dates back to A6300, but it is a pragmatic choice. By consumer camera standards, it is a very large sensor, it is sufficient for intended purposes, and importantly, it keeps the price down. Even by 2022 standards, it captures a lot of dynamic range, so it gives you plenty of options in post production. Both highlight and shadow recovery is still very solid with the sensor. The images are very clean up to ISO 1600, ISO 3200 is also completely fine in most cases. ISO 6400 is still usable in low dynamic range scenes and for digital publishing you can even use ISO 12800. The level of detail in stills is really good at 24 megapixels and reasonable pixel density. This will destroy any smartphone or any other consumer camera, which is probably the main task of the ZV E10. It simply shoots very nice stills that are way more than good enough for social media and digital publishing. The video quality is brilliant. Based on the specifications, I probably shouldn't like Sony APS-C cameras that much, but whenever I actually use them in the real world, I am getting very nice output. ZV E10 shoots fully downsampled 6K to 4K video up to 30 frames per second with no crop. The level of detail is great. Again, it is a completely different leak than any smartphone, action camera or any other consumer device. Unfortunately, it can't shoot 4K 60p because doing that with APS-C sensor requires processing power that is not available at this price point. It can still shoot very nice 1080p video up to 120 frames per second. It shoots 4K in 8-bit, which is completely fine for intended purposes. Importantly, you can use aperture priority in video. That may seem obvious, but for example Canon won't allow you to do that on EOS M50 or even EOS R6, which would be an instant deal breaker for me personally. A weakness of this older technology is that you will get a lot of rolling shutter. Having said that, I don't think that the target audience needs to be concerned with that, it is not a big deal in vlog or travel videos. Out of the camera colors are very similar to other post-2018 Sony cameras, so they are very accurate and neutral, which is in my opinion the correct approach. ZV E10 also offers all usual picture profiles that allow you to greatly customize the output. If you want to color grade the footage, you can easily use, for example, Picture Profile 8 with gamma change to Cine 4, which is a good compromise between the dynamic range and ease of color grading. I have mostly been using and testing the ZV E10 with 16 to 50 mm f3.5 to 5.6 OSS kit lens. Everything that I have said about the image quality still applies even if you use this kit lens and getting one for ZV E10 makes a lot of sense. It is extremely small and light, it is stabilized, we will get to that later, and it uses power zoom. Later copies of this lens are optically very decent. 16mm is fine for in your face vlogging shots, but if your vlogs mainly consist of this kind of shots you might want to consider something wider. The autofocus is a big part of Sony's appeal and very important for the target group of the ZV-E10. 
It uses the usual 425 face detection point system complemented by 425 contrast detection points with the latest software. The speed, the accuracy and the reliability are basically perfect. Real-time tracking works great as well. It just won't lose the subject no matter what. This is definitely good enough not only for any kind of vlogging but also for any kind of sports. Of course there is the eye autofocus as well. In video it works just as well but it is important to set the AF track sense and the dry speed according to your preferences. Real-time eye tracking in video is incredible piece of technology and it is especially useful for vlogging. It works incredibly well so we definitely won't be out of focus. Touch tracking also works great so I have absolutely no complaints whatsoever about the autofocus. ZV-E10 doesn't have in-body image stabilization which is a compromise to achieve this sort of size and price. There are still three ways to add stabilization. The first and the easiest one is to use lens with optical image stabilization. 16 to 50 mm kit lens actually has very solid stabilization. It is basically comparable to having 5.5 EV in-body image stabilization. The second stabilization method is active stabilization mode which is basically an in-camera digital stabilization. It is very effective but the crop is pretty huge at about 1.4 times. I will spoil this review a little bit and I will say that this is my only significant complaint about the ZV-E10. It just dramatically decreases the usability of the stabilization. More interesting option for me is to use the gyro data. I think that this is the future of stabilization. ZV-E10 can store the gyro data within the normal video file and these can be used to stabilize the footage using Catalyst Bros software. At the moment it works very well with ultra wide lenses. It lets you choose between the crop and the stability which is a very nice option to have but it is an extra step that needs to be done in the post production. The handling is fully adjusted for intended usage which means that it is optimized for point and shoot use. It has a big video recording button, a simple button to switch between the stills and video mode and zoom toggle which can be utilized with power zoom lenses. The grip is small but it is nice to have any grip at all at this size so that is a good compromise in my opinion. On the other hand it still has two command dials so we can use semi-manual exposure modes fairly comfortably. There is no PSAM dial though so we will have to use function menu to set that. Function menu is fully customizable and it will be very useful for more advanced users. ZV-E10 uses the old style Sony menu. It is not very well structured but you basically don't need to use it at all after the initial setup on a camera such as this one so it is not that big of a deal in my opinion. One more thing that I have to mention is that it has proper strap mounts so you don't have to use those annoying little triangles. ZV-E10 uses a 3 inch 921000 dot display. It isn't a great display but in this category and at this price point it is fine. Level of detail is acceptable, it is sufficiently bright and relatively accurate. A positive is that it is a 3x2 display so it wastes less space with black bars. It uses a rotating mechanism which is an obvious choice for a vlogging camera so even I approve of that in this case. The hinge is actually quite solid. There is no viewfinder on the ZV-E10 which is a correct choice in my opinion as it will be mostly used by people used to smartphones. Despite that it is a vlogging camera it can still shoot 11 frames per second with autofocus continuous which is very respectable. The buffer can store 46 RAW files which is also very solid. If you need to shoot some fast action once in a while ZV-E10 can definitely get the job done. As I mentioned I have mostly used the ZV-E10 with 16 to 50 mm kit lens. Of course it is an E-mount camera so we can use it with any E-mount lens although some combinations make more sense than others. Sony has also released some interesting APS-C lenses recently and I will try to review some of them in the future. It is important to have some lens building strategy though because APS-C lenses can't be used on full frame cameras and there isn't really any upgrade part within the APS-C E-mount but I will make a separate video about that. E10 uses NPFW50 batteries. These are physically small batteries with 950 million power capacity. The battery life is rated for 440 shots which is not bad for this battery. 
You can also get 80 minutes of 4K video on a full charge, which is very solid for this type of camera. Fortunately, the ZV-E10 finally uses a USB-C charging port, which is a huge improvement over the previous Sony APS-C cameras. Maximum charging rate is about 8 watts, which is okay for this type of battery. The audio quality is one of the highlights of the ZV-E10. Sony offers a couple of microphones made specifically for vlogging, but not having to use external microphone is very convenient, so I'm glad that Sony didn't cut any corners in this aspect. To sum up, ZV-E10 is another pragmatic and well-configured package from Sony. It may not impress camera aficionados, but it will impress the target audience. Most importantly, the output in terms of both stills and video is great even by 2022 standards, and it is a completely different league than smartphones or action cameras. Another important strength of the E10 is the autofocus, which is pretty much perfect for intended purposes. The handling also matches intended purposes and the build quality is okay. Basically my only major complaint is the crop associated with digital image stabilization. Sure, I could criticize it for not having a BSI sensor, not shooting 10-bit video and so on, but it is important to understand what is the job of this camera and you don't need 10-bit for that. I actually think that this is one of the most important cameras on the market because it bridges the space between the smartphones and enthusiast cameras priced at about $1700. It is also something that I can recommend to people who normally use smartphones but want something better for special occasions. I think that this is indeed a very suitable device for content creators and I can highly recommend it. So that's it for this video, thank you for watching, I hope that you liked this video and that you found it to be useful. Stay tuned for more videos and maybe consider subscribing if you don't want to miss my future content. I appreciate your feedback in form of thumbs up or thumbs down. If you would like to ask anything or share opinion, please do so in the comment section and see you next time.